Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to talk about one of my most favorite and least favorite parts of the application process for MD-PhD programs, which were the interviews. So specifically, we're going to split this up into two parts. So in this first video right now, we'll talk about general tips for the interview, approaching finding PIs to talk to, common questions to ask, etc. And then the second video, we'll talk a little bit more specifically about different types of interviews like MMI, traditional interviews, etc. So the first major interview tip that we have for you, which is probably the hardest to follow, is to relax. Um, this is probably going to be pretty hard to do at the beginning of your cycle, especially as you're kind of getting into the flow of doing interviews and also the stress of traveling a bunch, um, maybe far from home, dealing with time zone differences, etc. But ultimately, an interview is a really important time to be able to express who you are as you're calm and not stressed and like what you would actually be like to have as a student at that program on just a normal day. So as best as you can, try to figure out ways to relax and be able to put your best foot forward. So for some people, this means calling your family um, the day before the interview or calling friends, um, just taking a walk around the area, etc. But do what you need to do to feel calm. Kind of related to this, another great way to kind of be able to show the program a little bit about who you are, but also to learn about the program is to meet current students. Um, and usually interviews will give you sort of relaxed settings to do this, like dinners or other sort of social activities. So really take this time to pick the brains of potential older students in a program you would join and learn a little bit about the pros and cons of a program, because usually these things aren't evaluative at all. So it's really a good chance to get an honest impression of the program from students who are actually in it. And then the last thing that I wanted to mention is that the MD-PhD interview process in general tends to span out over a few days. So it can be pretty long and grueling. So um, one tip that we have for you is kind of tongue in cheek to bring a snack. But actually, this is pretty important because you're going to want to make sure that you have enough energy to be able to power through the day, even at the end when you might be feeling a little low energy and not necessarily able to be as chipper as you would like to be at the beginning of the day. And kind of going along, along that, um, also try to bring snacks that you can share. I know that I actually met a lot of people that I got along with really well at interviews by <laughs> sharing snacks. And I think it relates to like a, a bigger idea that even though this is kind of a stressful setting, um, use the MD PhD interview to also get to know the people who you're interviewing with because chances are you might end up at a program with them or see them at other interviews. And this is a great chance to both make some friends and feel a little bit more relaxed when you feel like you're just hanging out with people that you like rather than other people who you are interviewing with for the same type of program. Yeah, absolutely. And as it's a long and grueling process where you're meeting a lot of people, naturally everyone's going to ask you, do you have any questions for us um, after they have um, gone through the questions that they want to know about you? And I think this is a really important time for you to get uh, different perspectives of different programs and the environment that they're located in. So I think that um, one general question, sort of, for example, if you're in a, a program director interview and they're asking you if you have any questions for them, um, they're a really good person to ask about the broad goals of the programs and what, how the program defines a successful trainee. Um, does that mean that they see their trainees coming out to be 80-20 uh, um, in the lab, in the clinic kind of physician scientists? Or um, are they, or do they have a different vision of what a successful physician scientist uh, to them? Or do they have multiple definitions of what their trainees um, um, come out to do um, once they leave the program? And then a follow-up question to that is how um, across the length of the program with, within which the trainee is in the program, are, is the programming benchmarking this, um, towards that ultimate goal that the program has for the trainees. Um, are F30, um, um, what's the word? Are F30 grant um, funding, a, a, wow. Are successful F30 applications an important metric um, to a program? I know some programs are very proud of their F30 um, grant funding percentages and that they will share it with um, interviewees on their interview day. And so that's a point of pride for them and that reflects something about the program and their goals. And then on the flip side of how um, are we getting our students to be successful by benchmarking, 
what kind of mechanisms um, does the program have for helping students um, that may be struggling uh, at certain points along the way. Um, it could be a dispute with a PI, it could be um, an emergency at home, or it could be family uh, matters. Um, does the program have a history of dealing with these kind of situations successfully? Do they have built-in resources to make these difficult times slightly easier for uh, the student during these times? And more generally, you're gonna be living there for uh, six plus years. Um, so understanding the kind of living environment that um, the program is housed in, um, I would say that asking students this is probably your best source of information. Um, and a good question to ask them is like, what do you do on the weekends? Because it gives you a sense of their work-life balance, first of all, in addition as well as to um, what kind of activities that they find um, entertaining and relieving um, in the particular location where the program is housed. Yeah, I, I agree with all those. Definitely all really good questions to ask and things that might not be initially intuitive as you go to your first few interviews. Um, another thing that is a big part of interviews that are specifically for MD-PhD applicants is meeting with PIs that you would consider working with if you actually came to that school and did a PhD there. So um, when you're thinking about research, researchers, try to select researchers who, of course, you would consider rotating with in the future. Um, and usually a good way to do this is just to start by going through different lab websites and not only looking at kind of what their research focus is, but also seeing what recent papers they published and kind of what they're up to right now, since sometimes websites aren't updated to include the full scope of projects that people are currently working on. Um, as you kind of input this list and then eventually figure out who you're going to be meeting with, um, most programs will give you this information in advance. So usually about a week or two in advance. There are a few programs that choose to give this information a little bit closer to the interview date. Um, one that I can think about, I think, is Penn, if Kenneth can confirm for me if that's true. I honestly can't remember. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you WashU gave me mine um, within the week before the interview. So I remember WashU being a rather close one relative to other ones, yeah. Yeah, which I think it's to the general point that like no one is expecting you to be like an expert on the people that you're going to meet. You don't need to like read all their papers super in depth and have like a perfect understanding of it, but do make sure that you've actually looked at some of their papers and have enough information that you can try to come up with a few questions about stuff that you're interested in with their research, because usually this is a really great chance for you to learn about the PIs and not just for you to be interviewed. So you wanna make sure that if there's anything you're not sure about or any advice you think that they could give you, you use this to opportunity to ask them. Um, in addition, I think having, um, one thing that I really like doing is I consolidated all this information on one sheet before I actually went to the interview. So I put down like research interests and some questions that I had just because in the heat of the moment, it can be hard to answer those, hard to know what those questions were. Um, so I just would skim that sheet on the walk to my interviews for faculty members. And I found it really, really helpful in making sure that those conversations were as productive and natural as they could be in this interview session. And in general, with these research interviews, I think um, invariably everyone's going to ask you to describe to them your current research project or a or a significant research experience that you have had. And I think the important thing to keep in mind with when answering this question is that the range of um, researchers that you're going to be telling the story to or your story to. So I was doing um, a C. Elegans basic neurodevelopmental project, and I was also interviewing with like super translational neuroscience people. So being able to um, relay your science in a way that is broadly accessible is an important skill that I think you should consider in preparing for these interviews because it's very easy to fall into the jargon and the minutia of your project because you're living it every day, but um, making sure that you're able to provide a high level overview um, and convey it at a level that is generally accessible will be really important um, in communicating your science um, during the interview. Yes. Definitely very true. Um, I think that that it, one good thing to do before an interview is to kind of practice giving that little two-minute feel about your research, just because that's something that will come up so much. And by the end of the interview trail, you'll be a pro at it. But at the beginning, there might be some kinks that you want to work out um, behind the scenes instead of having it be like the first time as you're actually interviewing. <laughs> I know towards the end of my interviews, I, there was a point where I was such a pro at it, like I would have to like purposefully add mistakes. So I don't didn't sound like I was just like, basically like a robot like replaying like an audio loop to like make it sound more natural so 
you definitely get the hang of it towards the later interviews. And that's a general thing. Um, I think that it's very natural. And I think everyone's nervous on their like first interview, but you, you, it gets better as you go through and do a couple more. And then you'll slowly, slowly begin to like enjoy the process of interviewing um, as weird as that sounds now. But um, to think about it, like you get to meet so many incredible PIs over the course of such a short period of time and they just like you have their undivided attention um and you're able to talk to them about their work and about your work and that opportunity is incredibly rare like down um, the line of your career so it's really a really incredible time just to be curious and passionate about science yeah i agree and like i also just love meeting the older mdp students um like the ones i interviewed with but also the ones who are actually in the program because that's such a great support source of mentorship like whether you go to that program or whether there are people you're going to run into in conferences or similar circles like that's something to look forward to so i guess um what we're trying to say and like what i'll end off with is that interviews are stressful but they can also be fun and then the key is just trying to strike the balance between being professional and taking them seriously but also recognizing that this is a very cool opportunity and you can be excited about it as well um and then i think the a little piece of advice that I got at my Harvard interview actually that has really stuck with me and I want to pass on was that um, when I came into my interview for HST, which is the MD program I'm doing there, um, everyone was sitting in this big auditorium and then our Dean of Admissions basically told us like he understands that we're all super nervous and this is like a big deal for all of us, but he wants to know who we are like just outside of this nervousness, like who are we? Like when we walk into his office and interview with him, like who are we like on a normal day? And I think trying to keep that in mind and trying to recognize that even in this stressful situation, people wanna know who you are just as a person was really fundamental in helping me relax and just remember that the most important thing we can all do is represent ourselves authentically. And then from there, things are kind of out of our hands. Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to add anything to that. I want to leave it just as it is. And just to tell everyone that the next video will be covering the different types of interviews. So we'll see you then.